Gundam.tk presents Full Armor Unicorn Gundam. Hey again, everybody, it's Robert184, two R's, two B's from Gundam.tk, which is GundamReviews.net. You've already seen the unbox of the Full Armor Unicorn Gundam and all the plates, both from the Full Armor Edition and that very cool looking X plate, two of them, and the insides. And now it's time to take a look at the other contents of the box. Some fantastic looking cover art here on the instruction manual. That's a very classic unicorn pose and with the green psycho frame in front of the, instead of the red, yellow instead of gold, that could not be looking any sharper. As you go inside, you're going to get some great color splash pages here, which is going to really show off a lot of the information that would normally be on the side of the box. But because the version Katoki boxes are so clean and stylish, you actually don't get as much information in terms of sales. I figure they've already got you with the sales with the version Ka, so they may as well just put all these details on the inside. The things that I'm attracted to so far in terms of visual appeal, you've got the B Hyper Beam Javelin, which just looks great. You'll notice that this one down here is attached onto the forearm with a whole bunch of weapons, whereas this one's extended and in the arm, looking like a great looking weapon. And you're going to have a whole bunch of ways to set this whole thing up. You can see here that you've got it all folded up and the shield on and open. The grenades are looking down good down there on the legs and they do have so many variations here for putting this all together but it's on the back of the bazookas and you know this sort of gets overshadowed by just the fact of those clear parts which are gonna look so good when you've got the big bazookas pointing out and beam gatling guns and a shield back there and what are they triple missile pods basically the whole kitchen sink is on there and yes back weight issues i wonder how that cannot happen when they're all laid out, you can see there are the big bazookas, the beam gatling guns, where you're going to have uh, three pairs there, the two beam magnums, all these extra pods and hand grenades, and three shields looking very sharp there, folded up. Uh, yeah, they're all folded up there anyway. And here you can see all the parts of the weapons, the hand grenades, the beam gatling guns, triple missile pods, which are going to go on the side of the hyper bazooka, which is a great name, and the beam javelin in its extended and folded up mode. You'll notice that there's no green on display in there, so I wonder if that's going to be a mechanism that opens up when you open it up. But anyway, this folded up one actually has a name. It's the short javelin, and it can transform. And they also talk about how it can attach onto the beam magnums, which is just going to give you all of those weapon options that we've seen over here. For an action base, it's going to connect to that. They've got a white one under there. It would look great with a double O type clear green one as well, I'm sure. And those back parts are actually growing on me when they support the boosters. Inside you're going to have three pages of plates. Please check carefully for the X's, which means that you're not going to be using these parts, such as on the B, and you've also got ones on the gray plates as well, which are going to be replaced. Six Q plates, that still boggles my mind. Anyway, down here, if you're looking to order parts, it's a thousand yen for the A parts, 800 parts for the B parts. Uh, the decals are 200, seals are 400. So anyway, if you are missing parts, you have to order the whole uh, kit and caboodle there in terms of the plate and after you build the waist the head the arms the upper body the waist section the ankles the legs and you go through all of that you're going to get to the inside with some great looking katoki line art that guy certainly does good work in terms of art there you've got it in green and white this guy looks great you can see the green there on the inside of the javelin even though that's not actually opened up there here you can see that you're going to get two pilots for the inside and two little bannigers, one for the inside of the cockpit and one just to stand there or get tucked away in a ziplock. And then you get some information. Again, this would be on the side of the box normally. The 94 base ja uh, jabber, which is looking pretty cool actually. I just thought this was a gimmick. They revealed it at one of the shows more recently. You've already got the boosters. Why not throw in the parts that you need just to make up that middle component? And if this guy wanted to go see doing, yes, the unicorn Gundam can go and do it. So far, I don't see any green in there, and I wonder if he's actually going to close up well enough to keep that all hidden. There's the cockpit looking very sharp with that open part there for the white. Uh, no clear part that's going to go underneath, but then again, this isn't going to be on display all that much, so it won't hurt. And they do have a little bit of history about the subflight system here. Moving on, the most important thing about a transforming Gundam like this, and it's not just a flop it over as we've seen with some of them, this is a complete opening of pretty much every part, which means the engineering is just incredible. Sure, there's complaints with it, but imagine a kit doing that 10 years ago. Almost impossible, or so it would seem. So you open up the shoulders, the head, the backpack, and you hulk out the legs and make this guy a lot taller before moving on to the reason why you get the green full armor one. You've got 13 to 23 for the, all these extra parts, including a closed and two open shields it's showing here. 
There's two beam magnums, which is looking pretty good. And even though you aren't going to be using all of these packs, and I still love the fact that they give you two different color blues there to actually break it up in the weapon itself. Still looking great. Two of those, you can't go wrong. The hand grenade's very simple, but those bright red parts and the plastic is going to look good. The traffic light here with the red is going to look good on the back of the bazookas. And after you build up these hyper bazookas, which are looking massive in and of itself, especially the ends down here, very domish. Look at all those with things that are slapped onto it. Then you're going to have to build a separate one for the left. And then it's onto the shields where you actually have two types. You have the shield A and the shield B. You're going to build two shield A's and it's shown as being open here. Even though back at the beginning they do show it as all, there's three closed shields. So this one's going to be open, which means they're going to go onto either of the forearms. Shield B, you're going to be building this with the parts from the original MS. So you've got all your I plates there and D's, etc. Basically low letters. And this one's going to be folded up, so it's going to go onto the back. Onto the hyper beam javelin, and you can see that you've got some pretty small parts there that you're going to put some green clear parts around and then put that very intricate little part over the top of it. Can't wait to see the effect of the gray, green, and pink all combined there. And when you put it together, the beam gatling gun, having six plates of those cues, I wonder if that's going to get old pretty quick. You have an A type and a B type, three of each, and I guess you just pop those together and make your pair. Then as you move on, you're going to need something to attach all of these massive things onto the back. So you've got a big frame system that you put the bazookas on, attach it underneath the backpack, plug it in, and I wonder if that guy's not going to go toppling backwards unless you actually have the boosters on and that cute little furniture in the back to keep it into place. Here it's sort of good that they are going to show you how to transform the javelin, which is important that it, since it does have quite a few features. I was sort of hoping though that they'd show you, and they seem to be doing it, to have all the different ways that you can transform these things and attach everything on, including putting the Gatling guns, the javelins, and the shields all together. You can also do stuff like that with the magnums. And you'll notice here, if you've got the two pink effect parts, that's going to be a very deadly looking melee weapon. Would love to play this guy in Extreme Versus one day, or Boost perhaps. And there's those furniture parts things, a little bit intricate. It didn't seem that, like the design was fitting for the Gundam, but uh, so far everything I've seen from the unbox is looking really good. Look at the size of this page just to show how you put on those two parts. And yes, you just put them inside. And then as if there wasn't enough in this fat manual to begin with, at the back you're going to have a page which is going to open up as you build up the option parts, or as they call the base jabber. Build the cockpit, build basically just that middle sprue down the middle, and then once you've got these boosters you can take it off, build up this frame sort of system, put it all together like that so it's going to look sort of cool like a trimaran or a catamaran, whatever you want to call that. And the legs are going to attach in. I wonder if it would work in destroy mode. Anyway, they've always shown it in unicorn mode. Looks sort of cool, and it's got some gas pedal looking things on there, which are looking impressive. Before you get to the back, where you're going to have three pages showing you pretty much how to put on all of the decals. You're going to need them. The decals are shown in color. All of these things are shown in color. Front, back, everything, all the weapons, everything that you need to make this look fantastic. And anybody who has the patience to put on those stickers, I salute you. And when you fold that up, there's an additional bonus on the back, and that's if you want to go and try to read a whole bunch of stuff here, there's actually going to be an interview with Fukui Harutoshi and Katoki Hajime. He's, of course, the famed mecha designer going all the way back to the S Gundam, and then you have Fukui Harutoshi who wrote the novels for Gundam UC, which were so popular that they actually became animated after the fact. And here they're going to talk about 0096 Final Sect, and what do you want to call this? Uh, Rainbow... Uh, to the Rainbows Beyond, I suppose you could call the ninth and 10th books in the series, and they're going to talk about how Banagher needs this kind of Gundam, and I haven't read any more because I look forward to seeing it. Even looking down at those pictures down there may spoil what you'll see, or a variation of it anyway, in the OVA. For the decals, you're going to have the eyepiece there, and some shiny green there, which is going to look good for the camera lenses, and on the beam magnum, zoo, it's so cool that you're going to be getting a couple of those. And for the unicorn horns, there is no plastic, yellow plastic in this kit whatsoever. You're only going to have the choice of putting this on or painting this. I remember that the original came with shiny gold, which you'd think would look cool, but it didn't really look good. So anyway, I painted mine yellow and I'll probably do the same again, but it's still good that they went with the yellow seals here because it may just complement the green even more. And yes, here's the size comparison. You've got the decals there compared to the Gundam decals over here, and then you're going to have the marking seals. 
The decals themselves are going to be in gray and white and red. Not a lot of red on there, but just enough. So these you can put on, I suppose. And the decals here, they're just going to, you can see the white film around all of these. Some incredibly cool looking ones. You've got a whole bunch of red on here, which is going to look great on the white. You'd wonder if they would sort of go green because of course the red is going to look fantastic with red psycho frame. However, everything I've seen with this already on in the promo shots and around the box, the red does look good on the white with the green underneath. So overall, this was a lot of fun to unbox and very different from doing a high grade age kit, as I'm sure you can imagine. Anyway, I've already built the version Katoki back in 2007. You can check out its review. It was fun, it had some problems, and it looks like this one is going to be treading a line that's similar to the OVA in some ways, but mostly similar to the old one, and I hope that's not going to prove to be a big problem. However, the real reason why I wanted to get this is just because of the bright, shiny green, which should, should look fantastic. The red looked great, but how about this? And those X-plates, the full armor parts, and just to have that much weaponry on a Gundam, the fact that they're even going to prop it up on the back, is it going to work aerial? Lots of questions to see. And something else that really impressed me is just the base jabber has really grown on me. The Unicorn Gundam, because you've got this in green, if you're not showing it off, what's the point of having the full armor? Unicorn mode seems very dull, but by having that base jabber in there, there actually seems to be a point, and I wonder if it's actually going to get used on display on a few people's shelves. Anyway, everybody, Robert184, Gundam.tk, thanks for checking this whole thing out. Don't forget, you can check out my old review of the old Unicorn Gundam, and now it's time to get to work turning all those plastic parts into all those weapons to slap onto that guy's back so that he can fall over. And, uh, yeah, basically, I'm hoping it's going to be better than that. Anyway, everybody, thanks for watching. See you next time. Lots more to come. Bye. Even Captain Grudek approves of what he's seen so far of the unbox.